Good morning, Lynn Valley. I want to read you a martyr story from Jesus Freaks called, uh, under the section called Fearing God, Not Man. And it's about civil disobedience. It's Georgia Vins and Janati Krushkoff's the USSR in 1966. It was like no protest the world had ever seen. In the news every day, we witnessed riots with slogans being yelled, signs and banners were being waved, and even rocks were being thrown at the authorities as they tried to keep the angry mobs under control. But on May 16, 500 Soviet Baptists gathered in the courtyard of the Communist Central Committee and did not shout slogans or demands, but stood together praying and singing hymns. On their behalf, Georgia Vins and Janati Khrushchev presented a petition to the Soviet government requesting the official recognition of their organization, a stop to governmental interference in church affairs, the release of imprisoned believers, and then freedom for Soviet citizens to teach and be taught religious faith. They stayed through the night and into the next day. It was the culminating step of a peaceful movement for religious freedom in the Soviet Union that began in 1960. Some of y'all may remember those years. Vins and Khrushchev and others had then formed a committee to protest the tightening government and restrictions on believers. In 1964, with the gover government's permission, they organized the first campaign for human rights in the communist world. They distributed a list of 170 Baptists imprisoned for their faith in Christ to government leaders, international organizations, and to others. On the morning of May 17, soldiers and KGB officers surrounded the peaceful gathering. Around 1 p.m., a number of buses closed in, and the soldiers attacked. They beat the believers and forced them toward the buses. No one fought back. Instead, the believers linked arms and started singing over the cries of pain from others being beaten and dragged to the buses. Once they were loaded onto the buses, they were taken to prison. Yet even there, they continued to pray and sing. The communists had refused the pleas of these peaceful protesters, but they had not broken their spirits. It took another 25 years, but eventually what was known as the Soviet Union was no more. Could it be that the example of these few helped to keep the flame of religious freedom lit? God doesn't always answer our prayers immediately or in ways that we expect, but he does answer. Every good work of the revolutionary Jesus freak serves as a witness to the cause of Christ, fearing God, not man. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Nonviolence is a powerful and just weapon which cuts without wounding and ennobles the man who wields it. It is a sword that heals. And then Jesus said in Matthew 4, Matthew 5, 14 through 16, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do men light a lamp and put it under the peck measure, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven.